Alright guys and welcome back. Right, in today's episode, I was meant to be fitting the front bumper. Now, I've just pulled this outside, I've given it a really good watch. I say just, I did it a few days ago. Pulled it back in and left it. So, fast forward a few days, I come back in the garage and I find this on the floor. Now it's not catwee, it's actually cooling. So, I need to work out exactly where that's come from before I can proceed with this project. Right, so first off, I'm going to remove this panel here so I can get to the header tank better. I can't see any signs of leaking at the back of the engine. Nothing appears to be wet, everything looks nice and dry. All the hose clips look really good. I think the stainless steel clips, the hoses look in good condition from what I can see. So I'm going to look at the front of the radiator now. Now, this is the air Conrad. And it is wet, but when I washed the car, I soaked all this because it was quite dusty. So, that's not helping that much really. Now, that's the condenser for the aircon. That's the vehicle rad. That's one of the many oil coolers. It's got loads on it. This one, I believe, is for the transmission. I don't know what that one up the side's for. You can't see it, but. So yeah, that rad, what I can see looks in good condition and I can only assume by looking at it it comes out the top now what it has got which is a bit annoying is a side um, a side oil cooler for the transmission you can see it there that's the transmission pipe going in just there right next thing to do I think is to pressurize the system now I've borrowed a pressure tester so let's use that and see what happens so I found an adapter what fits it's obviously not a genuine Aston Martin kit this. So I'm not really sure exactly what it's meant to fit, but it does fit, so that's the main thing. Got a little hand pump. Lock it on. I'm going to pressurise it to 15 psi. And leave it for a bit and see what happens. So it's had 15 minutes, and as you can see, it's still on exactly 15 psi. The puddle has not grown. There's no it drips, and that nothing looks any worse. So with that in mind, I'm going to start it up and run it up to temperature. As you can see the pressure is increasing, which you kind of expect, so it's getting hotter. Get up to temperature nicely. Can't beat a V12. And there we go, I've just rubbed the bottom of the radiator with my finger and it started pouring out. So uh yeah. Conclusive, we found the fault. Right, so the rad's got to come out, which I really didn't want to have to do. But such is life, they put him worrying about it. So, silver lining here, is this panel that goes across the top is in not very good condition. And I reckon this has got to come out for the rad to come out. So it's a good opportunity to repaint this. I think the first thing I'm going to do, just to gain better access, is to take the bonnet off. Before I do that, because I'm working by myself there, I'm going to wrap all the bonnet with tape just to kind of give it the best chance of not, you know, not scratching it. So I'm just going to go around all the edges with loads of tape and I'll take it off so I like to chip. Right, next job is to undo the bonnet hinges. <laughs> Need to make this as easy as possible here. It's like I say, I'm by myself. Right. So I've got one left in each side. Just gonna pop the stay off. 
Nice and carefully. Right, what I just did was level expert idiot. Do not try that unless you're very confident because you could massively cock it up. But by myself, I've got no one to help me and sometimes you've got to do these things. So yeah, level expert idiot that. However, that's allowed me loads of access now to a radiator. And when I come to put it back on, there's no way on earth I'm gonna do that by myself. So I'll get somebody to help me. That is the slam panel which I wanted to repaint. As you can see, it's quite corroded. Doesn't look great. So good opportunity this. Right, somehow I managed to forget to click record. So I've taken the top hose off and I've drained most of the coolant into a bucket underneath. Now I'm taking the red fan of wiring off. isn't great to get to. That's that out. We've got a couple of um, couple of 10 mil nuts holding the red fan on. So I need to get that off. One fan pack. Right, so these oil cooler pipes off. I've clamped the bottom pipes where they flex. So I've removed them out. See the rad fans all out nicely. Um, I found a rad on eBay for a Jaguar XK, which from what I can tell is the same, just not quite as thick. However, it should all fit. So I might risk it for get one of them because they're a lot 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 cheaper we're talking like a third of the price and that's a brand new one um but yeah i'm just struggling with air comrade i've got it out on one side but not the other side because obviously you meant to unbolt it properly which i have done but i haven't taken the gas out and the, there's not a lot of flex in the hoses unfortunately so it's just making me struggle just that bit right condensers off it should just lift out now My God, that's tight. In theory, it should pull out, but it's not doing. There we go. Effortless. And there we have it, it was leaking from there. Could be a result from the accident, I don't know. Maybe a little bit of a debris hit it. The rest of the rad looks good. Remember this car's only done 40,000 miles. So yeah, not really sure, but that's the issue. Let's try and get another one now. Right guys, I've got another radiator. Now, this is a radiator from a late 90s to early noughties Jaguar XK. Now, I'm gonna be honest, this is a slight downgrade. It's the same dimensions, however, the core is a little bit smaller, it's seven mil smaller. Now, some people are gonna be screaming at the screen now saying that's a stupid idea, why would you do that? Aston Martin spent all this money making it, blah, 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 blah. But in reality, this was 160 pound brand new, and an Aston Martin genuine one's about 900 quid. So, 
I figured I'd give it a go. Another reason for me thinking it'd be okay was, was that I have got a 2 litre turbo Vauxhall Nova. Now, that car standard should have a much bigger radiator than it does have. It's currently running a 1.4 radiator. They should also have an oil cooler. It doesn't have that. It doesn't have any overheating problems. It's always been fine and I drive it hard. I've also managed to get these O-rings. Now these are the O-rings for the oil cooler. They didn't have any on when I took it out. Uh, the pipes didn't that is. However, they should have them on. Um, and I did find one on the floor, so I must have lost the other one somewhere. They must have kind of fell off or pulled out when I, when I took them apart. So anyway, two pound each from Aston Martin. However, on the spec list, it gives you the size. So I took the size, went on eBay, and I managed to get five for two quid posted, which is absolute bargain. So these are an Imperial O-ring and obviously readily available. So there's another little cost saving for you. Now all this has been cleaned up, I've just gone over it with a rag and some WD-40 just, you know, get the crap off, makes reassembly much nicer. Right, terrible news. The Aston pipes don't fit the Jag. Now it does come with adapters. The Aston pipe does fit in there, but it's the wrong fitting, so it won't screw in. Basically, it will fit in there if the bottom hole was a little bit bigger. That is 11.8 mil at the bottom. That is about 10.5 mil. So if I drill that out to 11.8 mil, the pipe will fit in and screw in perfectly. Bit risky, but it's worth a go. Right, on that terrible bombshell, I think we're going to wrap up. Video's been long enough, and I might be a couple of weeks trying to sort this. It's very unfortunate. I've ordered a drill bit. It may work, it may not. If I'm, you know, I'm a little bit concerned about Swarf getting inside, so I'm going to try and cap it the best I can. But if that doesn't, you know, if I'm not happy with it, I'm going to have to bite the bullet and buy an Aston Rad. So, with that in mind, uh, yeah, we're going to wrap it up. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Give me a nice like and a comment. I do appreciate them. It makes my day when I read nice comments. So yeah, see you soon guys. Take care. See you later. Bye bye.